Open your newspaper or go on its website and take a close look. There's a new revenue stream flowing through the pages. The official and somewhat euphemistic term for it is native advertising. It's being touted as a potential savior for the cash-strapped fourth estate. Media companies desperate to claw back revenues lost to the internet. Native ads look like news stories, but they're bought and paid for. The relationship between newspapers and their advertisers has always been, as they say on Facebook, complicated. Take the case of The Telegraph in the UK and the world's second biggest bank, HSBC. One of the paper's best-known columnists quit The Telegraph this year quite publicly, saying that the paper's news coverage of the bank was compromised by its reliance on HSBC as an ad client. Native advertising takes the links between newspapers and advertisers into a new area, with papers producing ads in-house that are designed to sit alongside their journalism and be just as compelling to read. Editors say that there's a separation between the editorial and advertising departments that's a bit like church and state, but not everyone's a believer. The Listening Post's Will Young now on the uneasy relationship between advertisers and news outlets. When news broke in February that HSBC was helping some of its clients commit tax fraud, the story got big play around the world. But in Britain, the silence of one paper was conspicuous. The Daily Telegraph relegated the news to its inner pages, prompting Peter Oborn, the paper's chief political commentator, to resign publicly. In an article announcing his resignation, Oborn wrote, the coverage of HSBC and Britain's Telegraph is a fraud on its readers. If major newspapers allow corporations to influence their content for fear of losing advertising revenue, democracy itself is in peril. But what happened in the case of Telegraph is not an isolated case. The problem, I think, is structural. It's about what's happening to news organisations across the board. They are increasingly losing audience, especially younger audience. And therefore, the imperative is to get greater advertising revenue. The power of advertisers is increasing. Ads have always been elemental to the flow of what you see, how you consume it, how it's paid for. What we're seeing is the sort of evolution away from what have been long familiar, century-old forms of advertising in the, in the form of print media in what's called native advertising. The content of the ad it becomes part of the whole appeal. The thing that's different is that there's a feedback loop that would include, obviously, the client. Clients work closely with the New York Times tea brand studio to produce what the paper calls paid posts. Clients like Cole Hahn that make ballet shoes, or Netflix that commissioned a feature on women in US prisons. But what if the client is a powerful bank looking to rehabilitate its reputation following the financial crisis? One of the early pieces we did that got quite a bit of acclaim was a, a seven chapter um, interactive data visualization for Goldman Sachs. And that ran on our site for quite a while. The user comes to the Times to get immersed in, to pay great attention to really high quality storytelling on topics that matter. And I think there's a benefit to a marketer for just being a part of that ecosystem. Native schmative. An ad is an ad is an ad, is the way I feel about it. The New York Times should not be in the business of managing people's opinion of Goldman Sachs. There is no way that I can take as seriously the New York Times reporting on Goldman Sachs, knowing that they have just been on this uh, content creation journey together. It very simply represents another example of news outlets doing pretty much the definition of selling out. Native advertising is just an effort to confuse readers to think that they're getting something other than an ad. According to a company called Contently, big business and publishing can meet on ethical ground. They say it's up to publishers to set the parameters. When media companies partner with brands to do sponsored content or other kinds of branded content, they need to be the ones that uphold the ethical standard. They need to be able to say, we're not going to do this if it's unethical or if it betrays our readers. Someone has to, has to draw the line. Also right now, uh, media companies still hold a lot of the distribution power. So I think they should use that to enforce good ethics. But are ethics and advertising so easy to square? 
It's not just the New York Times trying to answer this question. The Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, the Guardian and the South China Morning Post have also followed the lead of marketing savvy digital natives like BuzzFeed, Vice and Huffington Post to launch in-house advertising agencies. In India, one of the giants of news media has been selling creative services to corporations for over a decade, sometimes getting paid in shares of the companies that it promotes. The Times of India group started MediaNet, whose job was to produce content, which is sponsored content. It has been then followed by other organizations across the country. This actually generated a lot of debate in India, in the sense that it was seen by many journalists that this is compromising journalistic autonomy, that we are increasingly becoming hostage to advertisers. Advertisers aren't stupid. When they pay money for something, they expect to get something in return. With native advertising, your ad seems to be a little bit more under the aegis of this respectable news organization. If it didn't work like an ad, they wouldn't pay for it like an ad. And that's the important thing to remember, whether it's called storytelling or content or co-branding. An ad is an ad is an ad. And it still represents journalists making work using criteria that is something other than journalistic criteria. The news outlets that now trade in native advertising know that that's an accusation they have to take very seriously. Any suspicion that journalists could climb into bed with corporate clients puts credibility at risk, which is why the New York Times are at pains to point out that they've not only drawn a line between native advertising and journalism, but built a wall. Something that is never to be tampered with is the utter independence of our newsroom from the commercial interest of an individual advertiser. We had to create a group of people that were entirely separate from the newsroom operation of the New York Times. We would share the storytelling tools, but we would never share the storytellers. Which brings us back to why we need news outlets at all. News consumers read the newspapers and websites that they trust. But who's going to pay for principled journalism when we're now so used to getting what we read for free? In a capitalist system, news outlets too have to make a profit to survive. Money is being taken away from the traditional journalism, which is creating a, you know, an interesting problem for traditional newspapers, magazines, broadcast companies, because they need to be able to fund that kind of journalism that's important for the world. And there's kind of this desperation almost to keep the money flowing towards uh, the groups that are also doing real journalism. I think the best way to maintain um, healthy, independent journalism is to maintain a healthy business model. Readers are seeing companies that are using the canvas of a Times article page to tell a story in the appropriate ways I've described before, creating feature-length productions for marketers that stand at the quality level where they can run on a place like the New York Times. I think that raises a fundamental question about public interest. Are media organizations primarily working as a conduit to promote corporate interests? Or is there a bigger fourth state role that media has always believed to be performing? And if that is compromised because content that we see in newspapers is native advertising, that undermines the idea of a public role for the media. More voices on the download now on the editorial and advertising sides of today's newspaper business. I think media is run more like a business rather than as a responsibility towards the society in India. Uh, in my opinion, uh, this is a situation mainly because of the attitude of the people uh, that any story can be given the right spin. As an industry, we need editors who are courageous enough to take on the challenge of possibly going against advertisers and other pressures. Now that news organizations are financially dependent on these advertisers, it has become more and more difficult.